virtual summits are the most powerful online marketing tool available to grow your list, launch your platform, make more money, and create an impact in the world, even if you're just getting started. If you are ready to take your summit to the next level, then tune into the Virtual Summit Podcast with Dr. Mark T. Wade. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark T. Wade, founder of Virtual Summit Software and creator of the One Day Summit Formula. And I'm on a mission to help you, the summit host, get your summit out to the world in a powerful and impactful way. So let's get started. Tired of boring old interview-based summits? Want to spice yours up and create a binge-worthy summit? then you need to add some new themes into your summit. Today, we're going to be talking about creating a DocuSummit. Hey there, Dr. Mark T. Wade here, founder of Virtual Summit Software and your host here on the Virtual Summit Podcast. I'm really excited to dive into this uh, new and interesting theme we're going to be talking about. But before I do, I want to remind you to check out our resources over at virtualsummits.com, everything from getting started with the summit to interview training, etc. And don't forget to check out the Summit Genesis Workshop. That's our three-day virtual intensive where I take you from none to done with your virtual summit and creating a successful summit. All right, so let's jump into this. In our viral summits concierge, our Dumb For You Summit service, we have a lot of fun. We're working with some incredible thought leaders who have a message to get out to the world. What we love is getting a little crazy and fun with our summits. Now, No two summits are the same in our world. So we start off by determining which of our 10 different summit themes would be a good fit for their summit. Anything from the boring old information-based summit to our summit story theme to our summit talks theme. This particular summit called the Autoimmunity Super Tools DocuSummit is proving to be a real winner. Yes, it's way more work. Yes, it's much more difficult. And yes, it takes more time. But remember, The point here is about raising the standards, elevating the summit game. If it was easy, everyone would do it. Now, when I say DocuSummit, you may be thinking, wait, I've never heard of that. And you'd be correct because it's never been done before. We took the spinoff of a docu-series and then a docu-series came from documentaries which, uh, which are being broken into series of videos to, instead of just one video. So, well, we are taking it to the next level. We are taking a docu series and changing it up so that it can to bring it into the summit format. We're still in the process of creating it, so we'll see how it turns out. But I'm pretty confident it's going to be awesome. And you all know me by now. I'm not one to hide behind success. I like to show you what works, what doesn't. And in this instance, what I'm actually working on in real time. So I want to quickly introduce you today to the DocuSummit theme and what goes into creating it. So let's first take a look at the overview of doing a DocuSummit. And again, this is actually the process we are taking our viral summit concierge client through. So we created this process um, of informing them and showing them how they need need to set this up on their side so that we can help them um, on our side. So I'm taking you through the exact same steps uh, that we took them through. So first off, it's like a normal summit with select interviews put into a series of summary videos being released throughout the summit. The DocuSummit videos are the highlight, but the other interviews and sessions, <coughs> excuse me, the other interviews and sessions are the filling. You must put the time and energy into preparing for your interviews for your DocuSummit. You can't just wing these. The DocuSummit videos can only turn out as good as the original interviews. So you have to make them good. You can't sit there and think, well, you know, I'm just going to wing this interview and it doesn't matter if this lighting's not good and it's not set up. They'll fix it all in post-production. That's not how this works. It can only ever be as good as the original interview. So you really need to crush those. Also, there will be about three to six videos ranging between five to 20 minutes each. Now, you'll want about five to eight speakers. More is not better here. And about 30 minutes of interview content to be used. We're going to be putting that all together. So again, we're going to be chopping this into three to six videos. Those videos are going to range anywhere from about five to 20 minutes. And it's going to include up anywhere from about five to eight speakers. Okay. And again, we don't want to put 10. We don't want to put 20 because there's only so much you can put in there. And if you have 10, 20, 30 speakers, you're trying to put into the docu summit videos, then some people are going to be left out. They may not be happy about that. Also, this is a docu summit. This is your story. 
No one can tell it for you. Our team is here to assist in the process, but at the end, the product depends on you. So be diligent in the preparation, interview, review, and creation stages. That will help ensure you have a final great product. Virtual Summit's software makes hosting a summit easier than ever. The only software in the world designed specifically for hosting a summit lets you set up a summit in a matter of hours with no tech skill or team needed. You can try out the Virtual Summit's software free at virtualsummits.com. But hurry, this is a limited offer. Also, this is not a documentary or a docuseries. Most of those have a budget of around $250,000. So we're not going to compare it with those items. It's not the same and it's not intended to be. This is to add a different perspective and flair to your summit, to bring the interviews to light in a slightly different manner. So don't compare it to a docuseries. Now here's the process for the interview and then we'll dive, let me just quickly run through this and then we'll dive into each of these a little bit more in depth. So the process is one, you got to outline the story. Two, you got to create your video structure. Three, you got to research your topic. Four, you need to select interesting and compelling speakers who relate to your story. Create, next, you got to create questions for your speakers to get the story you want to tell. Six, review the interview and highlight the content to use. Seven, create a final storyline using the information. Eight, we're going to create transitions between the clips. Nine, we need hooks and a cliffhanger for each video. And then seven, or excuse me, and then the final aspect here, provide, uh, provide the, now we go through polishing and post-production, editing, cutting, and polishing. So that's the overview of the process. Let's kind of just quickly dive into a few of these um, to take a deeper look. Now, outlining the story. One, you need to know the end goal of your DocuSummit videos. Think about the story you are trying to tell to get to that end goal. Who's your audience? What will they want to hear or learn? What do they not know already? What do they already believe and support? So you got to understand your audience. You got to understand what the information is. You got to understand your story. And then you need to outline that. Like Get that big picture. Get the idea outlined. Two, we want to create your video structure. Okay. Essentially, how many videos do you want to release? What's the main purpose of those videos? What will go into each video to accomplish the purpose? So this goes back to the step before. What's the outlay? What's the overview? What's the story you're trying to tell? If you're going to use five speakers, maybe these, you know, and you want them to be about 20 minute long videos, maybe three videos is great. Maybe you have, you know, have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Or maybe you're like, well, I have more pieces or chapters to this. So let me give you an example of a video structure. So this is a five video structure. Video one, introduce the topic. Video two, get to know the characters, the, the people who are going to be on the DocuSummit. Video three, discover the problem. What's this problem that the whole point of this summit and this DocuSummit is about? Video four, we need to inflame that situation. And then video five, the final video is the solution, happy ending, and next steps. Or the grand finale with the call to action. So now you could easily put that into three videos. Usually there'd be at least three videos. Okay. So beginning, middle, end, or maximum six videos. Again, this is a docu summit, not a docu series. You do not want it to be seven, 15, whatever videos long. This still has to fit within a summit. And you're thinking of one to maximum two videos a day being released with the docu summit. So if you've got more than six, or if you have six, for example, and you're doing three, a three-day summit, you're going to put you know, video one, then video two. Uh, day two is going to be video three. Video four, day three is going to be video five, video six. Or you can say, I want to extend my summit longer, and maybe you're going to do five videos, and you're going to do a five-day summit, and having one video released each time. Now, remember, there's going to be interviews and panels and other things happening throughout those days. So the DocuSummit video is mainly just the highlight. It's the thing that it's the storyline that they're following throughout the whole summit while bouncing out and getting the information they need from the other sessions. Okay. Also a way to think of this is you could have information that's being distributed in the DocuSummit video. But then the interviews is where they go and get deep dives into those topics. Like the, 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 the sessions, the other sessions outside the DocuSummit could be where it's like a specific topic that they go deeper in. So inside of the DocuSummit video, 
they're exposed to the idea, again, the topic, the characters, the problem, the situation, and then they go into the summit each day to get more information deeper into the problem or deeper into the solution. Okay, now the video structure, I like the five video structure. Six is great. Three is wonderful too. It actually, if this is your first time, which it is going to be for most of you, uh, it's sometimes easier to go simpler because then it's a little bit less overwhelming and a little bit uh, less difficult, less work. So you can always start with a three video structure. And then if you ever want to do another one, you can expand it there. The next step, researching your topic. You may be knowledgeable, but you want to find the really compelling facts and data. Okay. So again, you may already be an expert on this topic. Sometimes that's actually a hindrance. It's the things that, that you want to dive deep, the things that like sometimes we just polish over these. We just look past it because they're just common sense to us now or they're second nature to us. But remember, you got to keep your audience in mind. So the other thing you got to keep in mind when you're researching the topic is what is the audience already overly exposed to? That's not really going to be that compelling to them if they just get more of the same. And it's okay to use that to support your topic. But you really want to look for some compelling facts, some data that's going to motivate and shock or inspire your audience. That's going to take a little bit of research. That's a good test, a good time for you to dive into your topic and find those little areas um, to pull things out that even you were surprised about. And the things that you find that surprise, shock, or motivate and inspire you are definitely going to do that for your audience. So you want to go and dive into that. Also, you need to research your speakers to find out who will be able to share appropriate viewpoints to get that story across. So the point of this is you can't just go, ooh, I want the, the, the most common problem with summits in general is people choose speakers based on their name or their list size. You cannot do that in a DocuSummit. In a DocuSummit, you need to be choosing speakers based on their topic, their expertise, and their story because it's got to fit into the narrative that you're trying to tell with your DocuSummit. Okay, you need somebody who has a compelling story, something that um, they have viewpoints. So you're going to want to research them and see what are the things they're already saying? Who has a story that one is interesting, that's motivating, that's shocking, that's inspiring, that, that your audience is going to be like, oh my gosh, that is incredible. Somebody who's, who's you know, been through extreme situations. Those are the people you want to bring in. And you can only do that if you research them. So you need to understand. You need to also see what are they normally talking on? Do they avoid certain topics? Do they not avoid certain topics? Do they go deep immediately? You really want to think about that when you're selecting your speakers. Because remember, you can only get five to eight. Now, names and list size and things like that, if you want those, that's great. You can still put those in your summit just not in the DocuSummit series, not in the DocuSummit videos. Maybe you want to bring them on for a Q&A interview or a fireside chat or just a normal interview, okay? Next step, selecting interesting, compelling speakers who relate to your story. So this kind of goes in alignment with what I was just saying, but it's not always about the name or the influence of a person, okay? Just to reiterate this because this is so important. The story is what matters. Someone who has a direct experience or a personal experience with the topic that can share, excuse me, their story is way better than somebody who's just considered influential. Okay. So again, with your docu summit, the videos that are going in there, it's, it doesn't matter if the person is a name brand or not. It's the story that people care about. You want speakers who can be polarizing. Okay. You know, for your perspective and vulnerable with their experiences. You don't want somebody who's like, I'm not going to say that that's controversial or, you know, I can't go down that path. I don't want to look vulnerable. That's exactly what you need in your docu summit. You want topics and people that are going to say the hard things. Things that are going to open up and share things that are not easy to share because that's what your audience is going to relate with. That's what they're going to connect to. And that is really what's going to drive the power of your DocuSummit. You also want, to, you do want topic experts who can offer advice and guidance. So you don't just want, you know, five speakers who are all just personal stories and have no experience or expertise. So it's kind of a, it's a combination of people with stories people who have experiences as well as experts who can kind of relate to those experiences and give guidance and advice on it. Um, and sometimes those topic experts will also have personal experiences, which may be what drove them to become experts in it. Again, remember five to eight speakers for this. The rest of the interviews will be a part of the normal summit. Okay. The normal summit interviews. 
Next step is create questions for your speakers and then interview them. This is kind of the challenging part right here. You got to put some time and thought into this. So in the interview questions are the most important aspect to this whole process. To get the story across, you have to get the content and information you're going to need from your speakers. You need to put great thought into the questions you're going to ask. Okay. Also, consider asking each question from a variety of different directions, okay? This will allow you to get the information said in a different way or format. What I mean by that, if you're trying to get the person to say, let's say we're talking about, you know, gluten and we're saying, or GMOs, we're saying GMOs are bad. So we can say, can you please tell us why GMOs are bad? We can also say, hey, in what instances have GMOs um, been used commonly? Um, what countries or areas have not uh, have banned GMOs or we could say you know in what instances are GMOs considered beneficial or why are GMOs being brought into the picture so all of these are around that one little topic of GMOs being good bad or you know why they're here which is important what that's going to do by bringing it from a variety of different directions you're going to get the information said in different ways if you just asked it one way the answer you get may not be beneficial, may not even be usable, but it's like getting enough, it's like trying to get more content or sound bites or clips so that you can get the one you need to be able to use because you're not going to use all of them. That's important too. You're not going to use every piece of information that that speaker says. You're going to be picking specific things from that to put into the DocuSummit. So you really want to make sure you're getting enough of the information so that something comes out of it that you can actually use. Now, one response may not be enough, may not be usable or fit your narrative while asked in different ways may bring the appropriate response. So remember that. You can also use the summit story arc to help crafting your questions if you need help, okay? If you've already got this nailed, cool, run with it. Um, let me quickly go through the summit story arc just for you in case uh, you need this. So set like the summit story arc is just the, the concept of telling a story. This has been used in the movie industries, uh, film industries forever. Okay. Now we've just adapted this for the summit space and the interviews aspect, but you got set the scene. What is the problem? Identify the contributing factors, the climax, climax being, you know, let's fast forward a hundred years, nothing changes, it only gets worse. What is that post-apocalyptic view of this situation? Like how bad will it be if it doesn't get fixed? Next is the transformation. So that's how, to, like, that's the solution, that's fixing it. That's, you know, the light through, you know, the shining light, the knight in the shining armor, whatever, that solves the problem and everything's going, getting better. And the next step is proof. Okay. Proof is important because most people at this point will be like, Oh, that makes sense. I bet you could do that or your clients could do that, but that would never work for me. So we got to show them everyday real life situations and examples that if they can do it, you can do it too. situation. And the final is the solution or next step or call to action. Okay. So that's the summit story arc. You can use that when crafting your interview questions as far as a guideline, but remember it really comes back to the storyline you're saying, the questions you're choosing need to bring about the answers or the information to the actual um, story or, or progression that you're trying to get across. So really, really think about that. What I like to actually think about is what is the answer or information you're looking for? What is a question you could ask to get that? That's how I would position it. Start with what, after you've done step one and two, lined out your story, what you're trying to get across, you've got the information you've researched. Now you're going to go and say, okay, these are the things that I need to come out of all of these interviews to make this story come to life. So that's something I need. What's a question I could ask? What's a second question I could ask? What's a third question I could ask? Here's another thing I need. I need a, a somebody, a personal example of somebody going through this process. Okay, so what's a question and how it felt for them? So if I know that's the information I need, now I can identify what question do I need to ask to get that information. So again, it's like everything else I say, always start with the end in mind. What is the end answer or information you need? And then work backwards and identify one, two, or three questions you could ask from different perspectives to get that information. And a step above is you can do that per per interview per person that you're going to have on your docu summit those five to eight speakers think of the information this is what i need from this 
speaker. Okay. This is the storyline I need from this speaker. I need these five main points. Here's the questions I'm going to ask to get those points across or addressed by that speaker. Again, a little bit more work, a little bit more challenging than just doing a normal interview, but that's what has to happen if we're going to create this kind of video one that has this information in it that, you know, this speaker's talking and it flows into this speaker and this speaker and this speaker. Otherwise, it's just going to be kind of a disjointed, this person said that, that person said that, that person said that. It's just going to be like listening to five people saying five sound clips, okay? You got to think of it in a story. It's important to know what you're trying to accomplish and then craft your interview view questions appropriately to tell that storyline. Also deciding if each speaker will talk about the same uh, concept. So the audience hears similar topics from different perspective versus hearing different topics from each speaker. So you could always have each of them talking around the same topic and having different perspectives on the same topic. Or like I was just mentioning, you're going to have each one saying different things to fill a different part of that story. Um, either way works. It's your choice, but you need to be th- you need to be need to th- be thoughtful about when cr- when you're crafting the interview questions. Be sure to check out the speaker management tool inside your virtual summit software, which lets you quickly and easily recruit and manage your speakers on your virtual summit, literally eliminating hundreds of hours of work. Get more information at virtualsummits.com. Also, be sure to ask your speakers to repeat the questions in their answers. This will help make their responses make sense in the final videos and give the viewers context to the response. So, for example, if you say, tell us about a time when you fell down. You want the speaker to say, well, a time I fell down or when I fell down, this blah, blah, blah. Or you're going to ask them, "Um, tell us about why do you not believe GMOs are good, for example. The speaker needs to say, well, the reason I believe GMOs are not good or the reason GMOs are not beneficial, et cetera. They need to restate it in the their answer because you're, they're not necessarily in the DocuSummit videos. They're not going to hear you asking the questions all the time because that would be kind of weird. That it, wouldn't, it wouldn't sound as good to have every video have you say something, then this speaker, you, then this speaker, you, then this speaker. So we want to have them repeat it because then we can pull you, pull the, the actual question that you're saying out so that it flows more smoothly. Okay. Um, pro tip, be sure to highlight and notate any great content the speaker says during the interview. So if the speaker says something, you're like, oh my gosh, that is so good. That is for sure going in it. Write it down. Note the time that it was said what was said, and why you thought it was important. This is going to save you so much time in the post-production, in the reviewing of the interviews, okay? So that's super important Um, because I promise you, you're going to be like, there's no way I'll ever forget that. A day or two days later or weeks later when you're going through it all, you'll be like, ah, what did that person say? Or if you just wrote down what they said and you didn't write down why it was important, you had a thought in your brain at that time, you got to also write, write it down. Now, we have... Um, some forms, some resources, some guides that we have, that we have there where we, you know, you write down the speaker and then um, the topic and you have time started, time ended, what it was, a description of what it was and why it was important. So you can just write those down so you don't forget because I promise you, you will forget. You'll be like, I know that sounds good, but like what context was I thinking about for that when it, when it happened? Okay. So that's a huge pro tip. Please, please do that. Take notes and write it down while you're doing the interview. Now for some advanced uh, setup. Okay, actually, so that was create questions. Um, oh, let me just go ahead and jump into some of this advanced setup as well because we're talking about interviewing the speaker. Um, something to think about at this perspective is you don't want it to just like that. One of the things with documentaries and docu series is it's not just a head talking head type of video, just like most interviews. Like the point is to make it look a little better. There should be some B roll, some video or images that spliced in that kind of notate or show what the speaker is talking about. Also, you don't want it to just be head on. So if we can have a secondary video that is from a different angle, we can use that to go back and forth in post-production. So some things you could ask your speakers and need to let them know this in advance. Again, you know, this takes time, energy, thought, and preparation. But if you can let them know in advance, say, hey, speaker, I want you to take your phone and I'm going to have you set your phone up while we're doing this interview and record it from your phone as well. Why? You're going to have the recording face on 
with the, the speaker when you're doing the interview. But if you can get the speaker to do a recording as well, now you have two views, one that's coming from the side, one that's coming from the front. And before you say, well, do they, you know, you might be thinking, do they need to record volume on their video, on their eye, on their phone? No, absolutely not. Because you're already going to have the audio from the main recording. The, all you need is the video because they can, you can always splice over the audio in post-production. So it gives two angles for every interview, which makes it look better in the editing. We can bring it, we can th put things on top of it, bring it from a different angle, et cetera. Also, one of the things I recommend, this is advanced. This may not be possible. One thing you'll have to check with this is audio, but setting the camera up in a way that it's not just talking heads, okay? And I'm talking about the main view. So what I would recommend is if you, if there is a way for them to be able to have the microphone and seated a little bit away, for example, if they have a long, you know, cord, they can sit two or three feet away from their, their screen, their computer screen, what you would ask them to do is sit in kind of a professional or casual setting, and now you're doing a full body video audio still needs to be good if the audio is three feet away it's not going to sound good and you cannot do that you have to have good audio for sure but if they have a way if they have like an extended lapel mic they can use or a cord on their normal microphone that extends i would highly recommend setting the camera the main computer whatever they're on two to three feet away from them taking a full body or at least half a body sit seated in a professional casual whatever environment because it's going to make it look much more professional. It's going to make it look much more compelling and, 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 and professional as compared to just a talking head video. Again, a little bit more difficult, may not be possible for everybody. You need to tell your speakers in advance, but they should also know they're doing a docu summit, right? They're not just doing a normal interview. There's going to be some other things and that they're one of the five people selected. And if they don't want it, there's other people that will be happy to be one of the five people. Okay. So you can always position it like that as well. Say, but to do this, we have a couple requirements. You'll have to record from your phone. I need you to have a long enough microphone cord that you can sit two to three feet away. Okay. And then we're going to film you full body or half body seated in a professional or casual environment. Okay. So that is, that really helps with the quality of the docu summit when it comes to post-production. Okay. Um, next, the, the next step is reviewing the interview and highlight the content to use. Okay. This, um, the interview questions may be the most difficult but the reviewing of the interviewing, the review of the interview and highlighting the contents to use, probably the most important. This is what you're deciding what's going to go into your docu summits. Okay, this is what the material you're deciding is going to get shown. You got, you know, five speakers times an hour, five hours of content, and you're only going to have 30 minutes of that in the final docu summit for example. So you got to go through again after review and you're going to take that initial storyline content, the outline that you've created. Now it's going through and pulling the pieces out that you've created and lining it up. Okay. So let's talk about reviewing the interviews. So after each interview review, you got to review the content and match it with the storyline you're creating. Which piece or point does the speaker say in each interview that's important and where do you want that to be placed in the videos? Creating a document outlining all of the content on each interview and where that content will go into the video. So what I recommend is taking, you know, when you're reviewing that video, when you're reviewing that interview, you take a document, say, ooh, that was great. Why was it great? That piece was great. Why was it great? Remember, if you've already done some of this, you'll, it'll make the process faster if you did it during the interview, but you still have to go back and review it because other things may have come to light from the other interviews you've done and say, ooh, that's actually going to be a great point here at the end. That's a great point. So you identify all the content that's said that was beneficial and when and why, when and where you would, why it's beneficial and where you would put it in the storyline, right? Now, you may actually have to go back and review that and cut some pieces out. Um, which, uh, so remember the video editors are not mind readers. This is so important. Video editors, you know, whoever is editing the video does not know what is in your mind. They have no idea. They are not familiar with your topic. They have no clue what this stuff means that they're hearing and seeing. They can only do what you instruct them to do. So you have to be clear what clips, where it starts. The clip starts here and ends here. When they say this and stop that, first word, last word, this time frame. 
you want and where you want them to do, like want them to be. So, okay, that clip goes in video three, you know, frame five, whatever. So we're going to get to creating the next step, which is creating a final storyline using that information. So you kind of map all of those out per interview. Now you've spent the time going through all the interview and the material and the information and putting it into a storyline format. Now you need to take that and line it out per video. So video one, okay, how do we want that storyline to go? What pieces, this piece first, this piece second, this piece third, this piece fourth. You're going to add another piece in. Maybe you need to do a clarification piece. Like, um, you know, maybe going from one topic to the next topic, you're going to do a quick little 10 second, 20 second post like with, or, uh, you know, information on a statistic or, you know, the most common things in the world that are affecting us are this. And then we move into the next topic. So you need to think about what gels that all together. So <clears throat> put it into the final storyline, line it out per video, what the story is, how it's broken down into the videos, and then lay out the pieces you'd like in each video and in which order. Again, video editors are not mind readers. Being more thorough and detailed is always better, okay? Next, we need to create transitions between the clips, okay? You got to think of the story from the perspective of your audience. Does it make sense to just have the responses back to back or does it need to have your voice asking a question? Is there additional context, stories, statistics, research, B-roll, anything or information you want to add throughout those videos. If so, you need to be sure you record yourself doing that or finding the information and making sure that, again, it is notated and lined out with the storyline. Next, create your hook and a cliffhanger for each video. So for the three to five videos, they, they will be used. They will each need a beginning and an ending, right? We don't want to just jump into the interviews. It can't just start with the speakers talking. So think of a hook that will catch their attention and create interest on the topic or the point that's going to be talked about in that video. Okay. So we're going to create a hook, something that's going to bring this either, you know, if it's video three, something that's bringing it all together in the past two videos, boom. And here's what, this is important. Okay. Shouldn't be like 10 minutes long. We're talking 30 sec 10 seconds, 30 seconds, maybe a minute, but there needs to be something that brings in the hook. Um, and these catch their attention, create interest on the topic, something that will put them in the in and increase their curiosity. Then for the ending, we need to summarize the information from that video and bring it together and then leave the video ending with it with a hook for the next video. Think like Netflix series, right? It always ends like with, whoa, whoa, what's the next thing? You just told me that that's happening and don't do it like a in the next video, we're going to talk about this. It's, you know, and now that we have 28 million people dying every year of this, we need the solution. And let now let's cover the solution. And then it stops. It's like, well, what's the solution? Oh, the solution's in the next video. So think of it like that. Don't just be like, in the next video, we're going to cover point one, two, and three. Like, it's not so much of like a descriptive ending. You're going to summarize the, the main points that you want to get across in that video and then leave it hanging for that next video. Okay. So that's important. Um, this is going to get them eager and excited to watch the next one. Now that that's relevant, except for the final video, that should be your call to action. The final video, there's no cliffhanger, right? It's the call to action. What's the next step? It's the next step to go to this link and download your book or order your book is the next step to sign up with a call for you is the next step to go take action and email or write their politicians. Like what is that next step call to action? You never, ideally you're just giving one powerful call to action next step. Okay. The more you give, the less likely they are to do any of them. Never give more than three call to actions. And again, I recommend only having one strong, clear, solid call to action. Give them a direction of what to do next. Then the last step is the editing, cutting, cutting, and polishing. Now, when it comes to the post-production, um, you may want to hire video editors to help you with this. You will need video editors. Most of you are not going to be able to do this. Although if you have something like iMovie or Camtasia, you could do it yourself, but be prepared for some detailed work. Now for our Viral Summit clients, we have our production team, our gra uh, video editors and graphic designers that do all of this for them. Um, as far as the, po the editing, cutting, putting all the information together that they've provided us. So they, we still have to go through all those same steps. The video editors still don't know what to do unless they are given exact steps and pieces of what to put together. 
but in, for our viral summit clients, our post uh, production team will put the final videos and edit them. So they're all raw files. Um, you need to take those raw files. You need to lay out that storyline with the different pieces from each interview you in, in the order you would like them, like we just talked about. Then you need to gather any of the intros, the cliffhangers, the transitions you'll be putting into the videos and where they need to go. You need to identify those, outline those. Um, you know, part video one, uh, you know, clip one, video one, clip two, video one, clip three, video one, clip four, video three, clip one, video three, clip two. Okay. And I would also say not just clip one, cause that leaves room for confusion. You go video one, clip one speaker, you know, speaker name and content piece. So video one, clip one introduction, Dr. Mark brings topic to light. Video one, clip two, speaker, John Lee Dumas, um, talks about his experience podcasting, okay? So, for example, and you need to make sure the names on the video clips that you've created match that, et cetera, okay? So, that, that's very, very, very important. And again, kind of taking a step back is identifying those pieces in the original videos. If you're doing this yourself, you would then have to cut those video clips and you're going to pull those pieces out. You need to name those pieces so you remember them. Otherwise, you're going to have hundreds or thousands of little video clip files and not remember what they are. So always name them accurately. Speaker, what, the, what it was and ideally what video you're wanting it to go in, but a spe specifically speaker and what it is. Now that then aligns with the outline. And then again, a video editor can come and go, okay, here's the outline. There's the video file, there's the video file, there's the video file. So be very, very specific with this. Otherwise, you're going to have wrong video files in there or it's going to be out of order. So again, like video one, clip three, name of speaker, piece of content, and then if like what the content was about. And if there's any other descriptor that you have, that would be good. With the Ever Summit feature inside the Virtual Summit software, you can rerun your summit as if it were live ongoing forever with one click of a button. This now lets you continue to use your summit forever, bringing in qualified and engaged leads every month into your business. Get more information at virtualsummit.com. Also, think, keep in mind, is there any other special images or videos or B-roll that you want included that, that needs to be noted where to place as well? So if you're like, you know, it'd be really great to have a picture of kids playing on swings here or a video of that, you need to notate that. If it's like, you know, it'd be really great to show the, a picture of the globe here when we're talking about world, you know, unity. Like you need to notate that. Things that you have in your head has to be notated. It's important to note that most likely your video editors are not professional movie producers. They're talented and motivated video editors. They do an incredible job, but they can only do what they're instructed. They are not innately in tune with your topic, nor are they able to read minds. So don't they, so they don't know how or what they're what you are wanting, okay? To ensure you are satisfied with the outcome, it is crucial that you be as detailed and thorough as possible when providing them with how you want the videos. Again, this is not to be compared exactly with a docu-series, but instead to be looked at as like a highlight summer, summation of the five to eight incredible interviews with the main points being pulled out in the form of a story. The goal is to create a flow or progression that makes sense and walks the audience to the end. It makes it quicker and more entertaining for them to get that information. Please, please, please do not beat yourself up or expect a professional docu-series as this is not the intent. Most docu-series cost around $250,000 to get started. So you should be proud of yourself regardless of the outcome as long as it gets the job done. Lastly, in the off chance you get overwhelmed or decide, it, decide you don't want to do the document, docu-summit format. You're like, this is just too much. Can't do it. It's not going to turn out great. Whatever. Make sure you perform the interviews in a similar ma manner as the other interviews. Don't go, okay, we're going to stop here in this interview and now let's change this and change that. Like you can still have the interviews set up the exact same way we said. Just keep run them smoothly and thoroughly through. Okay, don't do anything that kind of breaks it up or stops it or that, you know, would be, you know, doesn't, isn't easy to follow. Because this way, if you decide you don't want to do the docu summit format, you can still use those interviews as a part of your summit. So it's always good to have a backup plan just in case. Also, always remember to save. This is a side topic. 
but it needs to be said. Nothing more frustrating than doing a few hours of work and having it all disappear. So please, please, please set a reminder, save everything that you're working on, the outline, the video editing, everything. Save it. Save, save, save. You got this. Okay. That's a DocuSummit and how we're working with our clients to level up the DocuSummit game and make something unique, fun, and edutaining. If you decide to do something cool and crazy for your summit, let me know in our Viral Summits Facebook group. I'm always looking to celebrate with our tribe and see the amazing things you guys are creating. If you are interested in, in us hosting a summit for you through our Viral Summits concierge, just reach out in an email. We can send you more information. Until then, let's go out and have some fun. Just remember, your message matters. You have an impact to make in this world. So go out there and get started. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for listening. Now, don't forget to subscribe and leave a five-star review on the Virtual Summit Podcast. Head over to the show notes to check out all the links and resources from this episode, and be sure to grab your free trial of the Virtual Summit software. Now, I want to end this episode by saying to all the Summit hosts listening right now, I believe in you and you can do this. Summits are by far one of the most powerful ways to quickly grow your list, launch your platform, make more money, and most importantly, make an impact in the world, even if you're just getting started. So don't get caught up in analysis paralysis because the world needs to hear your message and there are people who are waiting for you to help them. So just get started because imperfect action is always better than no action. Thank you and see you on the next episode.